Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about the United States presidential election happening this year, 2020, in this November. It's going to be a big one. A lot has been going on this year related to that. And I wanted to break down a few things and talk about some thoughts I had about the candidates. We've discussed them both extensively over the years, specifically throughout this summer. We've talked a lot about Joe Biden, who became the front runner earlier this year and took their party's nomination. He's the Democrat candidate for president, of course, and he's been the talk of the town this year, mostly because he's falling apart mentally. He's getting really, really old. He's not very good for the job. He's not fit for office and all that kind of stuff. But that's um, besides the point. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Today, I want to talk about actually what's the difference between Trump and Biden. They're actually way more similar than most people will admit. And I think it's pretty interesting to discuss this because they obviously have big differences and they're different and they have a very important difference that's important to us. But I want to bring up their similarities too, to kind of like combat the Democrats and their sort of take on this thing, because they act like Biden is so much better than Trump. But in most of their more important categories, he's virtually the same. Now, in our important categories, he's not. We know that Trump is very much better. He's healthier. He supports conservative values. You know, he has great plans for our country. But those aren't the things that Democrats worry about. Like, they don't care about health. They don't care about politics, really, even. Like, we know that Biden and Trump are different politically. One's a Democrat. One's a Republican. Obviously, they have different stances on issues. But that's not actually what's super important to Democrats. Like, we know that they're not as super focused on this thing. They're actually more focused on identity politics. They care more about who you are, the way you were born, the color of your skin, your background, things like that. And that's the thing I want to bring up today because Republicans don't care about that as much. Us conservatives, even middle Americans, even a lot of centrists, they're more focused on the issues. So we got to kind of get past that. We know that Trump is worlds ahead of Biden on the issues. He supports America first. He supports, you know, building a border, limiting immigration, defending our country, law and order, all that stuff. But what's more important to Democrats actually fails them in this comparison. You see, Trump and Biden basically have very similar identities, and that's what's the most important thing to Democrats. All they care about is race. They say, oh, this certain race is above this other one. You know, white people are all racist and, you know, this and that. They act like that's just the most important thing. So I wanted to break it down beat by beat just to show you how ridiculous that is. You see, first of all, you can look at this picture and see that Trump and Biden could be seen as very similar. They're both old white dudes. They're both straight. They have families. They have kids. They're pretty well off. They have lots of money. And in addition, they're both from the northeast part of the country. So lots of similarities there, like very, very striking. And it makes it very kind of, I don't know, controversial or hypocritical for the Democrats to support Biden over Trump. I mean, if identity is the most important thing, it was so important that Biden had to pick a minority VP running mate. Like he said, it was going to be a woman of color for sure. And that was like the most important thing. It didn't even have to do with her politics or whether or not she paired well with Biden, whether or not they were a good politician. It was only they must be a minority. And that really proves how focused they are on this identity stuff. And in addition, this goes back to one of their ideas and what they try to teach in schools now. It's called critical race theory. And it involves things like intersectionality and these kinds of buzzwords from the left. And essentially, they get all of your sorts of characteristics, like your skin color, your age, your sexuality, your background, and they put it all together and they intersect it and talk about the race theory. And, you know, they have these kinds of hierarchies and stuff like that. We don't need to get too far into that. But essentially, I think you get the point. And according to Democrat logic, these guys are virtually the same. Again, they're straight white males. They're old. They're from the Northeast. They have families. They have kids. They're both Christians too, I believe. So there's really not many differences as far as critical race theory and as far as intersectionality. 
So that thing, I think, is very, very much going to break down the Democrats' ploy to get Biden elected. I mean, what is the difference between them? The only difference is Biden's a Democrat and they can control him and they know they can't control Trump. Trump is an independent free thinker. I mean, he's obviously a conservative, right-leaning guy too, but he doesn't kowtow to anyone. Like Trump does his own thing. And the only person he's trying to serve is the American people. So those are the real differences. And those similarities should really discount Biden as far as the Democrats. And that about wraps up that section. Next, I want to move on to racism, because that's another very important thing for Democrats. Democrats are focused and obsessed with calling everything racist. But the problem with that is Biden really has more evidence of racism against him as opposed to Trump. I mean, they try to pretend Trump is some kind of supremacist or racist or he hates this group of people, but there's no real evidence of that. The best they could really do is like change his quotes and lie about him and bring up these old tapes where he said he slept with some girl, even though it was consensual and totally wanted and nothing wrong with it. They say that's bad. They came up with like the fine people hoax which was supposedly Trump supporting these bad extremists, but that wasn't true. And yeah, there's no good examples of that for Trump. But as far as racism in Biden, I mean, I could go all day. First of all, if you look at his track record, Biden was pro-segregation back in the day. He's been in politics for many, many years. And back in the day, he voted for segregation. That meant he wanted to keep the races separate back during the civil rights era when that was a big, big issue. In addition, he was anti-busing, which was like a rule that bust different people to different school districts. This was something that his own VP candidate, Kamala Harris, called him out about. She said he voted against busing and that wouldn't have got her to the right schools. And that was her way of saying he was racist and stuff like that. So even his own VP candidate called him out for this racism. So I really don't see how Biden could come back from that. I mean, racism is probably the second most important thing, according to Democrats. Remember, this video is kind of towards their perspective. We're trying to convince and break down their mistruths and misunderstanding of things. We already did so with their identity politics, and now we're talking about their racism. Next, let's talk more about that. So the other thing to bring up here is Jewish people, okay? Jewish people are a great minority here in America, very strong group of people. Many, many great Americans have been of this group. No one is against them at this channel or in the Trump campaign. In fact, Trump has Jewish people in his family. His daughter is Jewish. She married a prominent Jewish guy. They have Jewish kids. Trump has visited the Jewish homeland in Jerusalem. He's the one that made Jerusalem the home of the U.S. embassy for the first time. That's the actual capital of Israel. So it's a very, very pro-Israel, pro-Jewish thing on the Republican side and here on No BS too. So that's a funny thing to bring up because the Democrats are very much anti-Israel these days. I'm not sure how much Biden has come out against them. This is more like a party thing, but essentially they don't like Israel very much. They're pro the people that hate Israel. They like that other religion that is not to be named, you know, that religion that involves lots of attacking of Jews and they hate Jews, the Jews, and this far left religion, this sort of very dictator-based totalitarian religion is what the left prefers more. That's why they have representatives like the ones in the squad, multiple squad members of, of that religion, and they, they tend to hate Jewish people. So that's another kind of racist thing. This is an ethnic kind of religion that goes down through their families. It's different than other religions in that way. And the fact that Democrats and Biden supports these kinds of people, they support him. They're very anti-religion and anti-Israel. And that's super messed up too. Like, And it's totally the opposite of the way Trump and his pro-Jewish family is and how we are here on this channel. So that wraps up that section. The next thing is pro-violence. So Trump is, of course, anti-violence. He's pro-law and order. He wants to stop things like wars. He's gotten us out of wars. He's refused to start new conflicts abroad. But the Democrats are pro-war. They want more battles. They want to fight with more people. That's why Hillary Clinton did things like antagonize China. That's why Obama didn't want to make peace deals with North Korea, a country which 
Trump openly met with and totally settled the score and stopped them from having any sort of instance with us. There was a lot of scared people and people worried about North Korea a few years back, but Trump fixed that. And really, the Democrats are the pro-violence, pro-war side. This doesn't just go to international wars either. We're talking about local violence. We've seen many Biden supporters throughout the country tearing down cities, setting places on fire, smashing windows, fighting cops, doing all kinds of bad things like that. Things that Joe Biden has really not condemned very much at all. Now, this actually changed recently, a few days ago. He finally flipped and started attacking the violence and saying that it's bad, but he didn't do it in the right way at all because, first of all, they were defending it and ignoring it for a long time. In fact, his VP candidate, Kamala Harris, raised money for these violent people, these violent Biden supporters that are tearing down the country, usually in relation to groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter. And Kamala Harris raised money to support them and get them out of jail and get them back on the streets. Biden gave them lip service and refused to call them out fully until it was politically convenient. That's what's happened recently. Recently, they have flipped and started to condemn the violence because they've seen that the protests have gone too far. It's starting to backfire on the Democrats. And that's why they've done this terrible thing. So now Biden is trying to blame Trump for everything. I mean, it's classic. It's pretty much his whole campaign is based on being anti-Trump. But to blame this violence on Trump and conservatives is absolutely absurd. That's what they tried to do in the beginning, too. At one point, some of the media was saying it was like white supremacists, which is just a bogus buzzword, a group that probably doesn't exist aside from like a few odd people across the country. Like maybe there's 10 supremacist in a country of 300 million people. But really, we know that it's the Democrats who are pro-violence. They're pro-war. They want to tear this country apart. They want to start these race wars and race baiting and hustling. And that's really the truth of the matter. And that's why I wanted to discuss this whole, is Biden and Trump really that different? In a lot of ways, they are different in the ways that are important to conservatives, as we stated in the beginning, with their politics, their policies, and their actions. But for Democrats, they're focused on things that they're actually super similar. Their identities are the same. In fact, Trump is less racist than Biden. So in one of their categories, Biden is worse. So it just goes to show what's going on here. Really, the Democrats aren't concerned about politics or getting an actual Democrat with Democrat policies in the office. They don't want a different identity. They want someone they can control. They want power. And they want to do everything they can to make money and get more power. And the last thing they're worried about is fixing or helping the United States. That about wraps things up. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Also hit that like button to get this thing shared. Subscribe if you're new and hit the bell for notifications too. Until next time, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow.